Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to all of you, my dear students. I hope that you are doing well. If I talk about what we have covered in the previous lecture, we talked in detail about letter, its type, especially talking about the formal and informal categories. We discussed in detail, we looked into the structure alongside some good examples and I believe, I'm sure, with a bit more practice, you'll become a master of writing a letter. If you look into the detail of those minor differences which are there within the structure of these letters and of course the content. Talking about our today's lecture, it will be uh, interesting because the focus is on your presentation skills. If I just take you towards the slide, in case of your previous lecture, these were the categories which we have covered. Good news, bad news, complaint letter and cover letter. And talking about our today's lecture, presentation skills. Now this presentation itself indicates that it's about presenting something. And if we talk about this skill as like a strategy or an art, well it's a means through which you basically communicate your views, your perspective and this is basically a means of transferring information and how do you use this presentation? Well of course it's like a scale of evaluating and measuring to how much extent do you have a command over the communication skills, how are you able to deal with all the seas of communication, how you can just augment and accumulate and use them together simultaneously, uniformly, in a balanced way. And then of course you come up with the communication and the information transfer. So if we talk about presentation, even before moving towards the points, whenever you will apply for a job, you are called for the interview, certainly there is a big probability they would like to see how you communicate. Of course, in case of your interview, you will be asked some questions. But of course, your employer and your interviewer would like to see how you provide a demo. If someone asks you to provide a demo or simply brief someone, or if you have to talk to your colleagues in a professional way, of course, so how can you do it? Well, that will be the scenario in which your presentation skills would be very much useful. And of course, in case of your job application and in case of your interview, these things would be evaluated as well. While talking about the official environment, when you have to communicate, whenever you have to conduct some meeting, if you have these presentation skills, once again, these will be very much helpful. So that is how these presentation skills become important and which is why we'll be focusing in detail within this lecture and the one coming ahead so that you may know at the end of these lectures how to present your own perspective, your own stance and your content. So if we start with the concept of presentation itself, what it is. So presentation means that it's an art of communication or a means of communication adapted to various speaking situations. I've talked about some it can be an interview, it can be a meeting, it can be a seminar, it can be a talk between colleagues. It could be any forum and of course a place where you have to convey some information, ideas, views, perspectives and this presentation becomes one of the means of communication. What do you do with it? Way of communicating your thoughts and ideas to an audience. So now you're getting an idea that you're not the only one involved within this presentation or the art of presentation or the process. But of course you require an audience as you will see within the upcoming essential components of the presentation skills. So we're going to look into it as well. But now if we talk about some of the situations in which presentation becomes important or where do you use it, just the way I mentioned, Whenever you have to brief a meeting or you have to brief a team before they start the actual procedure or anything they are assigned to do, well, of course, you have to present some things to them. 
and that's how presentation becomes important. Addressing a meeting, it becomes important. You have to talk to a group, again presentation is used. Even if you have to make a speech, you are asked to deliver a speech in front of a big audience. Again, if you have these presentation skills, if you know how to present the content, you'll be successful. Getting points across in a video conference. This is the new mode. This is the latest mode which is developed with the advent of information technology when the world itself has turned into a global village because of this information superhighway, the internet through which even you are right now listening and watching me. So that's how um, you should be able to adapt your presentation skills based on the environment, the channel and the medium being used for the transfer of information. So this is the different scenarios in which presentation becomes important. If we talk about the purpose, even if I ask you once again, what do we mean by the purpose? Why are we presenting something or why presentation skills become important. What do we do with it? Well, this figure provides you the answer. I don't think it will be that confusing because we have already gone through it multiple times by looking into other different forms of communication. Whenever you have to present, once again these should be your target and goals that you basically provide an information through presentation. You, after providing the information even, can directly take it towards persuasion. If you are coming up with facts and figures, that means that you are trying to persuade your audience, your viewers to take an action or to at least change their perspective. So not just the information is being transferred through this presentation, but persuasion is also there. And even if these two are not the case, then of course you present just the way I am using the presentation skills and even in certain scenarios wherever you have to present so just to educate your audience you are using the presentation skills that's how these are the different purposes of the presentation or the presentation skills itself that it can be information it could be persuasion and even education everything is achieved with presentation now talking about those key elements which are always like a part of your presentation and that's how becoming or the awareness of these elements would certainly develop your presentation skills. So if we look into the elements, the first one is the context, the setting, the scenario in which the presentation is going to take place. Whenever an event is about to happen, first of all, there has to be a space. And then, of course, the time in which it is going to happen. But right now, we are going to keep our focus towards the space in which it is going to happen. So, context covers the place, the area, whether it's a classroom, whether it's a seminar hall, it's a video conference room, semicircular class, it could be anything. So, first thing is the determination of the context in which the presentation is going to take place. That is also a key element. Then of course the extent of familiarity to how much extent you are familiar with the place. If it's your own class where you have to present, you'll be more familiar with it. And all of a sudden if you were asked to present some content, if you are participating in some conference where you have to present your paper or your survey or study, the new place where you will be going you won't be that much familiar with it. So that means the scale of familiarity would be a bit different compared to the, your own class where you are more familiar. Then of course your context also covers the analysis of the audience. Who is going to be the audience? Whether they are your own fellows, your own friends, your colleagues or your boss, even some other individuals who are not part of the organization or your institute or place. That means Things are just changing by the analysis of your audience and that is the main point to be considered here under the heading of the context as well. You next look ahead towards this and that is how we are going to cover all these four bullets. The equipments. Equipments and its awareness is also very much mandatory before you start the actual presentation. You should know 
how many equipments are available, what kind of equipments are available. Equipment means uh, right now as you can see over here I have a microphone just for making this communication more effective so that my voice is more clear and audible for you. So this is one of the equipment. In a similar way right now I'm talking to you through a cam. A cam is recording me. This recorded video is transferred to you and it's available online as well. But the point here is these are the kind of equipments that I'm getting. Then equipment also covers the kind of screen which is here in front of me on which I just do all the highlighting and circling and once I do it it is directly visible to you as well this equipment has been provided to you, to me officially and I am using it so these are the equipments its awareness is also very much needed I was made well aware of it and once I had the awareness I knew how to use it and now I started to get better and better in its usage so that I may not get confused when the real time of presentation begins just the way it's happening right now so this, these are the equipments that you should be well aware of then the other component very important component I would say is the presenter himself or herself and the key to success would be the knowledge and the experience of that presenter to how much extent has he or she presented earlier how what are the different nature of the audiences with with whom or with it uh, the presenter has already communicated with uh, with which uh, the uh, the presenter has already interacted presented their contents so this experience is going to determine how are they going to do their current presentation which is about to come of course after all this presentation skills are taught for you to become better in the upcoming presentations of yours so the presentations knowledge and the experience of the presenter would determine to how much extent he or she is going to do better in the upcoming presentation so this is something which gets better and better with the passage of time because of the fact that the more you deliver the better you become because you gain experience and you learn from all the mis mistakes that you do that even I do the point here is that your audience becomes your judge they point out all the errors by raising questions queries and from that you learn so this is also another important element which becomes a key factor of your presentation skills and contribute a lot into it in a similar way the uh, this presenter's knowledge and experience goes side by side with the audience knowledge and experience because that will also support it. You will be getting feedback based on the knowledge which the audience has and the kind of experience which they have and that's how they're going to equally contribute in the, in the development of your presentation skills. Moving ahead uh, this is also a very important component if we talk about the presentation you can call it reaction we can say it's like a feedback or in simple words if it's a good presentation the approval of the audience they change their perspectives they approve it they provide you with a good feedback but the point here is reaction itself of the audience becomes a very important component because if you don't get the reaction even you'll remain in suspense What's the point here? Why am I not getting any response from the other side? So suspense would be there. You'll be suspicious. You'll be confused. That's why this is also another key element which should be there in case of developing your good presentation skills. The mode of delivery, the delivery method. This is also very much important because now it's not static. It's not the same. It's dynamic. It varies and it changes from situation to situation because if you talk about the traditional way the conventional way so it's more or less like this one that the uh, direct face-to-face -face interaction which happens in journal just the way you see all the presentations just the way you attend all your classes so the class itself where a teacher is speaking to you and teaching delivering a lecture explaining all the points it's also a presentation because uh, this is the f purpose of education which is being transferred to you and which is being applied in this case 
but now with the changing circumstances this one is also becoming very much important and in use where the video conference sessions are held are arranged are carried out and we are very much well aware of it Skype is a software which is used for those who don't use it of course you need to practice the usage and the application of Skype as well because now things have become even more advanced so many new applications are coming ahead Skype is nothing it's like one part of all those applications which are now available online so you need to get used to it apply all the tricks apply all the strategies of learning and this is also one of the effective tool point here to mention is that now there are multiple modes of delivery which are used once again for carrying out a presentation and for delivering a presentation and one of this was just mentioned over here and this being also an essential key element of your presentation and presentation skills then of course we can never neglect we can never overlook all the communication barriers that you face uh, impediment and barriers once again reflect and refer to the obstacles the barriers which are coming in the process of communication for example if you talk about this direct face-to-face -face interaction the barrier could be uh, multilingualism for example you being a native of one language while your audiences are the native of another language once again the language of the mother tongue itself would become a barrier they won't be able to understand you in the way uh, they would have in case they were like you like you means they were of the same language having the common mother tongue in a similar way some other physical barriers could be there as well some noise some short circuiting network problem so there could be multiple things which could become a barrier and it's natural sometimes these things are happening in a similar way online problems could occur as well all of a sudden poor internet connection can lead to a disconnect call so if you are on a video call you're having a video conference session and all of a sudden there is a sudden breakdown because of which the call has been disconnected so that means no longer any video conference session so these things are also part of it and once you consider it to be like a key element of the presentation and enhancing your presentation skills so you consider these points and you prepare yourself that these barriers there is a possibility these barriers may occur and you should know the kind of strategy you need to take in case such a problem arises and how to deal with it so that's how you consider them being part of the key elements as well now I'm taking you towards the stage although we call it as the three stage process but it's like an overview because once we go through this overview the uh, this process which is divided into three stages creation then preparation and then presentation these are the three points that we are going to study but once we have gone through it then we will move one by one gradually looking at the points which should be there in mind which will go in line with this three stage process because we'll go with the stages in which you're doing all the creation we'll go through the stages in in which once you have done the creation what points should be there within your mind while you are preparing yourself for the actual presentation and once the stage comes of presentation what should be there within your mind and how to use your verbal just the way I'm communicating to you and how to use your non-verbals your gestures to support equally become part of the presentation process we're going to look into each and every component some would be discussed within lecture 21 while the others would be discussed in the next lecture but now bringing you back towards the three-stage process this is the one just the way I mentioned to you it all begins with number one your creation number two your preparation number three your presentation so that's how this is known as a three-stage process each having its own significance and its own features characteristics and steps now let's have a look into it in detail stage number one meaning you are about to create the content for of course the presentation skills in journal these are some of the things which are overlooked 
but they are very much crucial and should be there in mind especially while preparing your or preparing yourself for the presentation of course you require a topic you should be very much clear about the topic or the subject matter that you want to focus that you want to present in front of the audience once you are aware of it you need to set some clear objectives and goals for yourself that once again refers back to what has to be your purpose of the presentation we have studied some purposes information education persuasion so you need to determine this point over here that what should be the ultimate goal over here once you have decided a topic you have selected one how do you want to go through it how do you want to achieve all the objectives which you have set for yourself then you will move ahead and come towards stage three in which you're going to carry out some research research once again means doing a thorough and comprehensive study to have all the things that you want to discuss in front of the audience of course that doesn't mean just the way you have gone through the material and in a similar way you're going to present each and everything in front of the audience that is for your own clarity and for understanding all the concepts because things if they are clear within your mind you would be able to handle it in front of the audience once the time of or the stage comes of the presentation you will know how to simply organize each and everything making it short making a gist of it and then providing that gist to the audience but of course to make that gist you require sufficient knowledge and for that conducting research and doing this thorough study becomes very much important audience analysis once again very much ignored you should be well aware if possible try to do some research over this point as well that who is going to be your ultimate audience am i going to have some seniors or these would be just my fellows my colleagues my friends or in case of a classroom environment my classmates so uh, this study or this analysis is also going to help you a lot to how much extent do they have knowledge to how much extent do they have experience try to get the answers of these questions as well then of course you move to the stage in which you create an outline how are you going to proceed within your presentation for that purpose in a similar way for all the technical documents just the way you have an outline an outline is like uh, providing you an overview of how things are to be presented within a book or within some report or any text this outline helps you how things are coming ahead this is going to be the logical sequence in which one two three things would be provided and explained in a similar way you need to create an outline for yourself if considered necessary to be made part of the presentation as well so you have to prepare one outline for yourself that that will be a bit a bit separate it can be a bit personalized you can have this one for yourself and of course the one which is to be presented before the audience <clears throat> then once outline has been prepared within your mind then you are going to select the appropriate presentation uh, tool presentation tool of course it's part of those visual aids which you use of course we are going to discuss these visual aids at the end of this lecture and the upcoming lecture in detail but for an overview because we are talking about the process these are some of the common etc means there are many other but i'm talking about and i will be discussing ms powerpoint because it's used in abundance it's very much common it's used everywhere in almost every institute college university at every level and even in official organization i'm not saying that uh, the others are ignored or overlooked but it's something used quite common which is why this one will be taught in detail as well so you use a presentation tool you pick one and once it has been chosen you start inserting the content once then content has been there point here is once again to be mentioned that how to add the content what should be added as content is something which is coming ahead but once it has been added using the appropriate media uh, what should be the channel once again medium refers to should it be direct 
face to face or a video conference session or a recorded session or it could be something like a combination of all these strategies so that depends on the need uh, like in what strategies your audience more comfortable and in what way are you also able to manage it these are the factors which are going to determine how to use these appropriate media then preparing additional material of course there are situations of course just the way I mentioned uh, there could be power outages all of a sudden a short circuit and then lights out and uh, the presentation becomes invisible no, no longer available no longer accessible so there should be a plan B there should always be a plan B within your mind whenever you are about to present don't just rely on a single PowerPoint presentation which is being like visible in front of the audience and then you pointing out each and every bullet and explaining it in front of the audience you should have an alternative this presentation or presentation tool using which you are just simply explaining your content there should be a plan B there should be an alternative which in such a scenario can be provided to the audience in case they want to look into the detail as well that's how additional material becomes important provide some detail as well because there would be many among your audience who are interested within your work and would like to see it in detail confirmation process this means that you have done all the preparation but still you need to make sure whether things are final and are you really going to have the presentation or all of a sudden there is some sort of procrastination or some postponement because of it it has been delayed or it has been rescheduled first confirm this confirmation process also becomes very essential and should be done because it's part of your creation because this creation would lead you directly towards your preparation if you know that this thing has been confirmed then you're going to take a start with your preparation otherwise you can take a break wait for a while till the actual time comes for your preparation so now it's time to move ahead towards your stage two which is preparation now what can you do in case of your preparation because you always have some problems fear how is it going to go whether I would be able to do it or not I'm still uh, afraid I'm still shaking I don't know whether I would be able to do it I have a problem whenever I see people I start shaking I just forget about points so what things should be done because this is the point where you have to get rid of this fear you have to remove it uproot it out of your personality you should know that you can do it you can do it just the way the others are doing it because they are just like you I even used to call myself that you're a human being and you have to present it before other humans so we are all the same and therefore if they can do it so can you therefore it's your time and now start presenting and it always worked I believe in the beginning of course it can be a bit problematic but with the passage of time the point here is let me take you to that point rehearsals practice this rehearsal and practice is going to make you perfect and this is something which even I would say uh, you would have noticed within the lectures as well because uh, based on that feedback that I got from some students they used to say that in the beginning you were like a bit taking more pauses sometime uh, you were more serious and with that conversation I basically tried to convey the point that it was like a new beginning even for me and at that time things were gradually settling down but now I know I have met many and now I know what their expectations are what do they expect and now I'm trying to adjust and adapt with the changing circumstances and trying to make it even more interactive with these things which I have tried to incorporate and trying to bring within the lecture itself so point here is I take those lectures as rehearsals and now as a result of those rehearsals I'm getting better you are the better judge you'd be able to tell me in a better way um, when I see it so I feel a difference and I'll try to make it even better coming back towards the preparation rehearsals again you have to do it that is not the only thing of course you require good number of sleeping hours based on the research and things which I have studied the figure is like seven seven hours and 20 to 30 minutes 
so 7.5 hours on average is very much needed and very much important if you want to be very much healthy uh, when you are waking up the next day the next morning so this is like the minimum figure it can go even a bit less we have situations in which we have to wake up sometimes we have to work so much that we don't get much time but still on average this is the kind of figure that try to reach this figure try to make it like a sleep of almost seven hours even that will do but that will do a big difference within your health but you need to get some good night sleep a healthy sleep to be healthy on the next day because this is going to make a big difference if you are not sleeping well you'll be drowsy you'll be feeling indolent you'll be feeling lazy your eyes would be droopy and these black circles are going to appear over here as well and your audience will not develop a good impression of you so even before you have taken a start of your presentation they are going to ruin it so first thing is get a good night nice sleep you have already done all the stuff you have prepared it yourself you know most of the points you have done the rehearsal as well be confident that you know everything now it's time to get a good night nice sleep and then once you have taken a good night's sleep wake up early in the morning do the right kind of dressing a dressing which is formal uh, suiting the occasion goes in line with the theme of the occasion of course it depends on what is basically the topic and based on the topic if it's something very much serious you can choose uh, some dark colors of course to reflect that you are supporting and reflecting that theme if it's a light topics of course you can pick some light colors as well but light doesn't mean that you are like simply moving off the subject you have to stick to the point you have to dress formally that is the point here even uh, there there are this choice of colors that we learn from our seniors as well that in case of your suiting when you have to wear a suit so during the day light hours of course you can pick a color which is a bit light and in case of your evening hours so try to put on the colors which are reflecting this scenario of evening grayish a bit dark gray black so that means that now you are reflecting the same theme of the weather that this is the time and I am within that time I am also there within the occasion which is coming here in the evening and during the daylight hours of course you're going to put on the light colors of course black suits I'm not saying that you, these are not allowed to be put on in case of the early morning you can do the changes where something like a convention and some suggestions which were given by our seniors which is why I, have, I thought of sharing them with you as well but not to spend so much within this single point here there's so much to be covered point here is dress for the occasion and dress well then try to arrive early because once you arrive early you'll know the occasion you will have maximum space to look around you see the place where you have to present the sitting arrangement the sitting area number of seats which are there how people would be coming even if there is no one there you are already well adjusted you know where to stand how to come on stage you know where are the stairs because all of a sudden if you are asked to come and then you are searching for stairs that will look a, a bit awkward but if you are already there early you would know from which side to come you would have already observed people the way they are moving coming towards the podium then moving backward three steps and then moving back to their seats so these are the things which you for which you will have time if you arrive early for a bit practice once you have done this the next stage is of course <clears throat> the presentation stage in case of your presentation stage now of course you are here so at the beginning of the presentation the general rule of thumb I would call it that you need to apply an attention getter you are a bit nervous because you're about to take a start and you have this point in mind that first impression is the last impression so I need to have this a good and a very solid first impression which will be remembered and it will help me to develop some good relationship with my tentative audience which will remain there which will be listening to me which will be watching me for the time in which I am presenting 
therefore you need to apply an attention getter now these attention getter are of different types of course because purpose of these attention getter could be like the examples are coming but let me define the purpose purpose here is once again the word itself indicates you need to get their attention because there are occasions in which <clears throat> they are murmuring they are talking to each other buzzing laughing smiling even someone yawning and all of a sudden some of them are observing you that you are coming towards the podium and you are about to say something point here is that if you want to catch their attention and you want them to maintain their focus towards you you need to come up with something that is really uh, attention catching worth listening worth watching therefore now it depends on you what is your skill and in what thing you are good so some examples can be a relevant anecdote a pertinent short story which goes in line with something or the content which you are about to present so if we talk about um, if, if something has to be talked about regarding communication the importance of communication and the communication skills so you can come up with some uh, like a story in, in a scenario in which some individual is stranded on an island in a very early childhood in which he or she never got a chance to learn the language and now he or she has learned things from animal just the way they know the sign language now they simply use signs and symbols for communication and all of a sudden if the people uh, from the town or the city the ones who are just here for a survey they come across that individual who has been brought up in a jungle now if they have to interact how are they going to talk so of course they have to use their sign language and that person is already devoid of that art of communication that language so they have to turn towards that person's language just to do this communication but to have something communication becomes important now this is just a short story just for an example I've mentioned here but that's how you can catch the attention by giving them such a scenario to think about because once you'll be telling them the story they'll start imagining it within their mind and they'll become part of that scenario which where you are taking them so this is just one example you can also raise rhetorical questions rhetorical questions are not to be answered point here is that they are just thought provoking once again if I ask you that you you are well aware of the fact it's, it's like an assumption let's suppose that you know it's your last day and now you are uh, you are asked that what are the three things that you want to do uh, God forbid it doesn't mean that it is your last day the point here is that just imagine this is just like a question just for provoking your thought that if you think and if you are made to realize it is your last day and you are asked to perform three tasks what would be those three tasks and all of a sudden all the audience would say hmm uh, let me think what are the, those three things that I would like to do if I know that this is my last day this is this is these are the things which are important but point here is they all are performing the same task they all have been involved within a single thing and that single thing is your rhetorical question that you have placed which means now you have caught their focus and that's how this attention getter has done the job now whatever you is you are going to uh, say and what you are going to present would also be as significant as your first rhetorical question was because they're going to say each point which is going to come from this person is going to be thought provoking in a similar way as his first point was this is another example startling statistics sometimes if you're not like good at coming up with some anecdote or some rhetorical question you can come up with some figures just the way this a recent poll by Gallup <clears throat> showed that 70 percent of US employees are not engaged at work you're coming up with some statistics and statistics all of a sudden facts and figures mean that you are trying to make things authentic and this will be inferred as everything which would be coming will be authentic therefore nothing should be missed out so that's how this attention getter is going to work analogy you are trying to make your content similar to something which they are familiar with for example good communication is like a good design we know how good designs are how communication becomes like a good design 
and then if you talk about designing and then relating it with all the points which are needed for effective communication that means that your single statement has done the job by catching their attention and focus humor humor also is very much essential component very important strategy especially for getting the attention because if the joke is relevant if the joke is pertinent it will bridge the gap which is there between you and the audience at the initial stage you all will become part of a single crew a single ship and you all will steer it together because even if you do some lapses and errors afterwards they'll say okay man it's natural nothing to worry about overall the points are good this man knows or this lady knows what she is doing this is the way things should be done then talking about gimmick as I have written here, these are some tricks which are basically intended to attract the attention. For example, uh, when I was reading about it, <clears throat> there was an example that if you want to highlight uh, to avoid the use of uh, or to avoid uh, the paper wastage, wasting of papers, of course, in case of using your Microsoft Word document, you just have to delete it but of course looking back in time and keeping things in record when they are in hard form whenever you are writing or making errors you waste you put it in trash to avoid that you need to highlight the significance of these papers how many trees are being cut and how many forest like deforestation is happening just as a result of providing you a stack of A4 size rim and papers so just to highlight the significance if a person comes here especially at the beginning of a presentation with a stack of these papers and then all of a sudden it falls and then he starts collecting all these papers at the beginning they'll get the idea that something has to do with these papers which is why it is happening at the very beginning but this thinking has initiated and caught their attention as well so this trick itself has become a gimmick and now it becomes like an attention getter and a very successful attention getter which is doing the job especially for this presentation so this that is how um, within the very beginning of this uh, stage three of the three stage process meaning presentation attention getter becomes important then of course you have got the attention now they're listening to you so how to move ahead of course the time comes that you need to introduce yourself your background if necessary then setting up the theme what is going to be the focus and you should involve the audience as well of course and then once you have set the theme the next stage is that you need to specify the agenda and outline the outline which you prepare now do you remember earlier within the early stage you prepared an outline one outline for yourself for your help how you're going to proceed with the presentation and one outline for the audience so that they may know how they are going <clears throat> how they are going to proceed with the presentations how the points will be coming from one to the other that's how you specify the agenda and outline within this stage then of course using the PowerPoint slides or the presentations tool as guide and involving the audience you start the presentation on time and then you have confidence and develop eye contact so these are some of the things which should be remembered as well because now you have set the agenda agenda doesn't mean this is the end of the stage you need to open up the presentation tool as you have done this will be your guide which will be involving the audience as well and you will be going through the content explaining all the points of course you need to have in a similar way as you have gone through everything you need to have a proper introduction then some details and then taking them towards summarizing thing and coming towards the conclusion so everything will be happening alongside the presentation tool which you are using as an aid which will be discussed of course in detail as well uh, talking about this presentation stage so you need to uh, this take a start of this presentation well in time because this punctuality matters as well you'll be allotted a specific time and you will be expected to present each and every content within the allocated time because if you go over time that is once again like I said it is going to put a bad impression your audience would also have a, a specific patience time after which they will say 
when are we going to see the conclusion we want this to end as well there is always a specific time for which the audience can focus so keep it short if you are allotted a time uh, finish it within the time if you are not uh, located a specific time still try to keep it short then of course confidence is going to determine how much clear you are that's why you need to be very much confident and confidence would come from all those practice and rehearsal and telling yourself that yes you can do it and this eye contact also becomes very much important um, sometimes in the beginning it looks a bit difficult to look into the eyes of the audience but believe me the, this is the way you develop that link and relation with your audience you bridge the gap and you build rapport by this eye contact so that's how this becomes very much important and this eye contact can help you in the initial stages as well that if you go at the beginning and try to chatter and talk with some of the individuals they would be probably would be interested to provide you with the feedback so at that time you can remember some of the faces and then even if you look at them certainly you are having the eye contact and from that you can shift your eye contact towards the other individual which are there within your audience so that is how you're going to achieve your targets body movements and gestures this is also part of this stage where you are presenting the content and it would be coming it is basically the component of your non verbals in a presentation and how do they contribute within your presentation these are also very much important as we are going to see each and every movement counts because uh, body movement every movement has a meaning for example uh, there is one that I studied I would like to mention here as well that if you are listening to a person in this way that means you are very much attentive and responsive and acknowledging and accepting the perspective or opinion coming towards you from the other person on the contrary if you place your arms in this way so if this is the way you are doing it sometime you do it intentionally and if you are actually doing it intentionally that means that you are reflecting your disapproval and you are trying to resist the opinion coming towards you if it's happening spontaneously if it's your habit nothing to worry about but if done intentionally that can have a negative meaning as well so uh, if that is the case why not avoid it so not stopping you from doing it but can be avoided if you can voice effective pitch well that depends uh, who is your audience what is the number what is the size of your audience and then whether you are provided with a microphone or not because if you are provided with the proper equipment you can keep your pitch down otherwise in case of a classroom for example there are many students but you are provi not provided with a microphone so of course you can keep your or you can take your voice a bit higher you can take your pitch higher but it all depends on the other factors poise or balance basically it refers to equilibrium you need to maintain a balance within your presentation and how this balance would come in case of your non-verbals in addition to what you are saying if you move around just to make yourself visible to the audience then even at occasions you sit on a chair on a seat if it is provided to you some time to highlight the point all of a sudden from that sitting position if you stand up and then start mentioning some of the points which you consider important that means that through your body movement all of a sudden rising from your sitting position means that you are about to discuss something important if you start moving it this movement also indicates that this thing which you are saying is for each and every member and every person should listen it very loudly and clearly so this standing sitting moving everything has a meaning and shouldn't be ignored as we will study it in detail as well handling question uh, presentation won't be considered complete if there is no question answer session so this question answer session basically indicate that uh, your audience is at the listening end and they have listened everything they have understood everything based on those questions which they are raising question doesn't mean that they are not understanding 
question mean that they want to understand even more so there needs to be a question answer session that doesn't mean the presenter can't question of course he she has the authority of raising questions as well so you can do it as well point here is you need to handle those questions which you raise and also the question which are coming towards you reminders of course you need to have certain points which should keep you on the track of the presentation itself that doesn't mean that uh, you can't use them of course you need to use these reminders as these will keep your focus at the theme the central point sometimes while you are presenting things and all of a sudden if you don't have that outline which I talked about the personalized outline which should be there within your hand sometimes all of a sudden you will say oh, wh what I was talking about where was I and then audience guiding you okay you were discussing this and that so what to, in order to avoid that thing from happening you need to have some reminders reminders could be there within your hand in the form of a sticky note or anything but points should be there which would keep you on track and that will be the significance of your reminders some of the do's and don'ts once again you can call it as the etiquettes of presentation because these are the things which are going to help you especially while preparing or while using your presentation tool preparing the content and making it presentable for your audience keeping the slides clean and simple Keeping one third of a slide clear is a very good idea. The slide on which you're going to have the content. So uh, if you divide it into three parts, so try to keep the text on one third. Keep two third a bit empty so that when the audience are looking at the point, the points are visible, legible, readable, and comprehensible. They can easily grasp and absorb the points. If too much text is there, you, they won't be able to follow you. They'll be getting worried whether to listen to you or to simply read the content which is there within the slide. So keep it short. They look at the lines and then they'll start listening to you. Because the point of the presentation is they should listen to what you have to offer rather than everything being there on the slides. Add effective content. So when it's on one third, which means you have less space, keep it effective. Formatting is very much appropriate as you will see as well the use proper format and how you can make it proper let's see it adding constant uh, consistent title and text placement this is basically making it like an accessible document or like an accessible slide where everything should be there at the point where it is easily accessible labeling all the charts and tables where they are placed so wherever there is a chart wherever there is a table there has to be some labeling so that they may know what does this line ref refer to, what is the x-axis, what is the y-axis, what does this line show in case of a table, what are these histograms reflecting, everything should be clear. In case of too much text, just the way I mentioned it, uh, let's see if this is the text, even if I ask you to start reading it over here, you'll get bored although it's just on a single slide but that is how if you place your text in this paragraph form that is how it is going to look never to use such form please try to avoid using such form of text especially within a PowerPoint presentation unless it's very much necessary please try to avoid because PowerPoint presentation is there where you have to present the points points there should uh, therefore should be there in front of you and then you explain them one by one <clears throat> in case of your text tips whenever you have to place the text now you have seen one example to avoid such big example or big text to be coming here on a slide what you can do is keeping them brief no more than eight words per line eight words per line means that whenever you write a single line or a single bullet point so there should be eight words not more than that in case of a slide not more than eight lines please keeping it short fewer words will force an explanation which is the point of a presentation you being the one presenting and explaining the points rather than just looking at the slide if it's there behind you or right now in case in front of me and I start reading all the points right from top top line to the bottom line this is not the purpose 
right now even i try to explain more points and i try to keep those uh, points and lines which i have placed here as short as possible whenever they have to be long i still try to explain it even more just to make you realize that the purpose is that it should be understood in detail now if in case of your uh, powerpoint this is the case that uh, you whenever you have to place a title so this should be the size whenever you have to place a title whenever you have to write it so this the font size should be 40 points in case of the body text or the point in bullets which are coming just the way the bullets points are coming over here so the general standard is like using the 24 points or the 24 point font size then this is also the font which is basically and in general recommended to be used here because this serif font or you can call it as the one which is Times New Roman generally used in case of uh, Microsoft Word document but in case of PowerPoint presentation or the presentation itself this is the font which becomes more visible easily accept, uh, accessible legible and not that much hard to read that's why this is the recommended version and should be used in case of your PowerPoint presentation spelling and grammar this is also very much important just the way you have seen the significance of editing and proofreading especially in case of the writing stages and the writing process once again you need to avoid spelling and grammar mistakes in case of your presentation this becomes very important because your immediate audience is right now in front of you and they are reading everything which is there on slides what kind of expression are they going to develop of you like this person doesn't even know how to spell this avoid contractions just the way messages are being transferred in an SMS because that is a short messaging service where you just write I am and I will see you so I am this, these are some of the letters of course you try to use them in uh, SMS but please try to avoid them especially in case of a presentation and even official documents as well so proofread your slides carefully for these kind of errors no, there shouldn't be any spelling mistakes repetition and grammatical errors you might have made do try someone else to check your presentation as well as they are going to be impartial because it's not their own content so it's always good to have a peer review font analysis just as I mentioned here kindly look at these examples which I have because they are very much interesting in case of your font and transition are you able to see the point even right now though we prepared it but even for now I find it a bit difficult to read it because just the way the line itself says everything if you use small font your audience won't be able to read from the slide even I am unable to read from the slide but as I knew the point that's why I was able to read it so try keeping it moderate in size capitalizing only when it's necessary otherwise it will look like shouting just the way we understood it from the concept of email don't use complicated and distracting transitions so whenever you have to shift from one font to the other don't overuse it and keep it simple don't try to complicate things don't try to distract your audience by doing these transitions keep it focused don't use a complicated font uh, again the same point which I mentioned here sans serif the aerial version these are the ones which seems okay in case of a presentation rather than twiddling and times new roman just the way I've talked about these are okay for documents but not in case of your presentation avoid excessive bullet points please in case of your presentation never come up with such light I had to do it just to give you an example if you just try to give it a reading you will find a meaning but extracting that meaning out is very much difficult even uh, even I when I look at this I find it very much difficult like a spider web <laughs> so it's very much difficult it's kindly uh, use the bullets where necessary bullets should be something like bullet points which are providing you the target points uh, which should be discussed which should be talked about bullets shouldn't be pre presented just the way these are being presented because it really seems like that you are firing 
you know, the person with all these bullets which are there. So it seems like Counter-Strike or MOA. <laughs> so these are all the bullets which are left here and you have to kill all the terrorists. So that shouldn't be the case here. Keep your bullets limited. Keep your bullets short whenever needed. Um, this example seems good. Whenever you have a limited bullets, so you try to be more careful and only attack the enemy when it's needed. So keeping that point in mind, keep your bullets short and keep them to the point. Whenever needed, then try to use the bullet when there is an enemy. Otherwise, don't waste your bullets. Background and colors, very much important. Which of the following is most readable and why? Can you look at the example? You have a text here and the same but with some different color combination of text and the background. Well, I would say this one and this one is good for me. I'm taking both of these because uh, this is the journal one which is generally practiced. You have a white background where there is like the black text. In case of the one over here with two ticks, this is the case which you can use if the background or the hall or the classroom itself has a white or it's a bit bright in color. The scenario itself, it's more lighted, it's more enlightened. So in that case, of course, try to focus and write with this black color text because it would be visible because everything in the background is white. Background is white, therefore everything which should be foregrounded should be focused, should be black because it should be in contrast. In a scenario, I'm not referring to this place, in a scenario where things are a bit dark, you don't want people or audience to be distracted, therefore you have turned off the lights. The screen itself should be a bit dark in theme color as well and the text should be white. Once again in everything dark, the text will become uh, will come into the limelight, will come into the forefront and will be the focus. Therefore, keep your text bright in a dark environment and in a light environment, keep your text in black. So these are the points which should be focused here. And references are also very much important. References are important in the same way as you are writing an assignment Whenever you have to write an assignment, what do you do? You basically cite the author just the way over here you have cited. Whenever you are like citing the other person, trying to explain the concept, that is how you write the last name and then the year of publication of that typical work. We are going to look into the detail of how you basically do the citation when we will be talking about this concept of plagiarism and how to avoid it. But the point here is that you have to provide all the references which you are making within those slides. Whenever directly quoting someone, once again you have to provide the exact address. In case of diagrams and images, that is how you are going to once again provide the appropriate reference, should be there. Some more uh, key tips which should be there within your mind uh, for this process of presentation. You should be clear about the purpose of the presentation, once again the reason. You have to rehearse well, maintain the eye contact and be comfortable. Follow the tips and tricks of the presentation tool as we are going to see. You should know how to use that presentation tool that you have chosen for the presentation. Provide appropriate amount of information in the time allocated to you. So based on the time, decide how much information has to be added. Answer all the questions with confident at the end of the presentation. So when the questions are placed at the end, you will know you are clear, you have conveyed everything and now things would be based on what you have presented. This brings us to the end of our today's lecture. We have looked into all the points which should be there within your mind including the basics, the three stages of presentation and the, uh, the etiquettes of your presentations. And once you are aware of these, once you apply them, of course you can come up with a very good presentation. But the actual process is something that we'll be looking into. We'll be going into its detail within our upcoming lecture in which we'll be planning the presentation, then preparing the presentation, of course, using a presentation tool, realizing the significance of all the visual aids by looking into their details as well, then talking about 
the significance of our verbals within the presentation and also the significance of non-verbal communication within the presentation process. So everything will be covered within our uh, next lecture. But till that time, take good care of yourself. Just go through the points which we have studied in our today's lecture. It will help you to understand all the points of our next lecture. But till that time, take good care of yourself. See you in the next lecture. Thank you and Assalamu Alaikum.